calm, breathe, relax. Hi, are you ready for story time with Tom? Well, grab some popcorn, because it's going to be a fucking doozy. Greetings one and all, and welcome to Tom's Hit Parade. Now, first of all, before I get started, let me apologize in advance for any foul language you may hear during this video. I'm going to try and censor some of the worst words, but uh, I need to do this partly for cathartic release, uh, for reasons that should become clear very shortly. And yes, I am reading this from notes because I had to structure my thoughts somewhat coherently, otherwise I would leave some stuff out and probably sound like a babbling idiot. Secondly, uh, this will not be the ordinary Tom's Hit Parade or Tom Q public video. It's not about music. This is on a very different topic. But it's something that has caused me and my family major stress and unnecessary aggravation over the last few weeks. We've lost sleep and lost our appetites over this. Uh, now, anyone who knows me knows I don't go on reckless smear campaigns or trash talk rants unless I have a legitimate gripe and ample witness corroboration. Uh, I never do videos like these, uh, and I certainly don't do them to get attention or to get views. I didn't want to have to make this video at all, really. But unfortunately, CenturyLink's reprehensible behavior has forced my hand. Now let me start out on a positive note. We have been CenturyLink landline voice telephone customers for almost 25 years, have had an occasional service glitch or two, as is bound to happen with any utility. But when we have, they've been remedied promptly and professionally which makes what I'm about to tell you all the more baffling, concerning, and infuriating. Also, we were Earthlink internet customers for 20 years, and same thing, rarely had difficulties or complaints, but they were always quick and efficient at resolving them. Also, it's important to point out here that we live in a rural area on the fringe of cell phone reception, and while voice reception and texting is fine, our cell data connection is tenuous at best, so cell-based internet just is not an option for us at all. Now, I recently had to start working from home for obvious reasons, uh, but it was taxing our 1.5 megabits per second Earthlink connection. Yes, we were living with 1.5 megabits per second until recently. And when we found out we couldn't get faster internet from Earthlink because of where we live, I arranged for the necessary time off from work since we'd be without internet for the switchover. I canceled Earthlink, regrettably, and signed up with 60 megabits per second CenturyLink internet and made the appointment for installation. Uh, since we are already CenturyLink phone customers, they could give us a good deal. And, you know, 60 megabits per second was 40 times faster than the speed we were dealing with. So, hey, great deal, right? Well, the installation was scheduled for Tuesday, May 12th. We received the modem by UPS the same day. We got the automated reminder call the first thing that morning. After waiting around all day, we got another automated call at 4.45 p.m. saying the appointment had been postponed until the next day. Which is fine. I mean, I know that field work is unpredictable. Uh, they can run into installation problems that can set schedules back. So, hey, no big deal. I didn't mind that at all. Day 2, Wednesday, May 13th, comes and goes with no call, no show from CenturyLink. And uh, my mother needed my help at the end of the day, so I wasn't able to call them. And by the way, it's a good thing that I'm staying at home nearly every day anyway, so I didn't end up wasting work days when I otherwise should have been at the office. Anyway, Thursday, May 14th, day three. Since nothing had happened the day before, I got on the phone with CenturyLink first thing in the morning at 7.30 a.m., gave them a call. Their excuse was that we must have gotten overlooked. Okay, but they were able to set up a same-day appointment right away. The technician showed up about two hours later, uh, did all the wiring here at the house that needed to be done, and he went to hook us up at the nearby junction box, wherever that is here in the neighborhood. And when he came back, he said that the DSL line needed to be activated, I think is the word he used. So he got on his phone and forwarded the job to the appropriate people and told us, hey, don't worry, it'll be done by 5 p.m. At 5 p.m. sharp, since we still didn't have internet, I called CenturyLink again. He gave some extremely vague excuse about an equipment issue. I tried to get him to elaborate, but the dispatcher he was in contact with couldn't. I also heard him say something strange about the due date on our work order being 2022 instead of 2020. More on that in a couple minutes. Uh, so anyway, he said he'd get the problem resolved the next day, which is the same thing they'd been telling us every day up to then. So anyway, Friday, May 15th, day four. 
I had to go to the office that day to take care of some stuff and get some work hours in. Management doesn't want us to uh, show up at the office more than one or two days at the week at the most uh, to maintain social distancing and limit our risk of exposure. Makes total sense. Anyway, I got to the office early enough to take the time to call CenturyLink again. By this time, you can imagine I'm just a little bit hot under the collar. Uh, the earliest possible appointment uh, that he could get me would be next Tuesday, May 19th. You can imagine how that sat with me. Now, from this point on, in every call I made to CenturyLink, not only did I recap the events that had happened up to that point, but I also explained as calmly as I could how I needed internet to work from home. I needed to work from home to get paid, and I need to get paid to ensure the well-being of my 82-year-old mobility-impaired mother who lives with me. So I dug in my heels for an earlier appointment. He said he could work us into a Monday slot, but did give me another number to call. I called that number. That person again pointed out the strange due date for 2022 and supposedly fixed it, which made me question why the guy I talked to the night before didn't fix it, as I'm sure you are probably questioning right now. But at that point, I got optimistic again. Uh, both I and the phone rep kind of assumed that that might have been the holdup. If appointments are automatically computer sorted for the field workers by their due date, ours would have dropped to the bottom of the list if it was if it was mistakenly tagged for 2022 instead of 2020, right? So I decided to give them one more chance. And in an added gesture of wonderfulness on the part of the CenturyLink phone rep, she was able to convince her supervisor to prioritize our job for Saturday, the very next day. Well, guess what? Saturday, May 16th, day 5, 5 p.m. rolls around, we still have no internet. And well, we all know nothing gets done on Sunday, so there was no point in calling them on Sunday, right? So, Monday morning, May 18th, mind you, this is six days after we were supposed to have internet, I got on the phone with CenturyLink, 7.30 a.m. sharp, spent the next three hours on the phone with them, making at least five different calls to various CenturyLink departments, and in the course of just that morning's calls, using the information I read to them right off the order confirmation I had in my hand, nearly every department gave me a different story. The order no longer existed or had possibly been deleted or canceled. The order existed but was under a completely different customer name, first name and last name, which made absolutely no sense. Or the order existed but it was on hold. And in that case, the phone rep did give me the number for the held orders department, but when I dialed it, I wrote it down and proofread it, read it back to him for proofreading twice. I dialed it. It had been disconnected or was no longer in service. I shit you not. Finally, after three hours on the phone just that morning, here's the info I got. The order was there, was presumably under our name, but it was on hold pending additional work that needed to be done in the area. CenturyLink was supposed to be calling us back next weekend to reschedule the appointment to complete the installation. The earliest possible activation date for our internet would be June 5th. Again, I shit you not. By now, you've probably got a lot of the same questions I do. If the order was pending or on hold, why did it take us four days and nearly a dozen phone calls to pry that information out of CenturyLink? Or better yet, why didn't they call us to keep us notified of this? Especially after I'd told them several times how urgently we needed internet. In fact, you may be noticing a pattern through all this. The only phone calls we got from CenturyLink were robocalls from their scheduling system. Appointment confirmations, delays, etc. And even those were inconsistent. Otherwise, we're the ones who had to do all the calling to get any sort of information or progress reports from them. And they gave us a different vague excuse each day, along with what were now obviously hollow promises of same-day results. And in retrospect, I have no reason to believe those were for any other reason than to just shut us up and get us off the phone. My brother speculated about halfway through all this that CenturyLink didn't actually have the infrastructure in place in our neighborhood yet to, put, to support the internet service they were already trying to sell us. Over the last few months, we've seen them installing new utility boxes in our area along the roads and stuff. And that last vaguely worded explanation CenturyLink gave us that I told you a minute ago seems to line up perfectly with that. But if that's the case, they should have been upfront about all this, especially with how important a resource the internet is right now. They might lose our business in the short term anyway, but at least they'd still have our respect. And they don't anymore. As I said at the beginning of this video, we've been loyal CenturyLink telephone customers for nearly a quarter of a century. 
We've never missed a payment, we've never been late on a payment, and we've even kept our landline at a time when so many people are ditching it and going full cellular. And now, thanks to the recent behavior, and I'm still not sure whether it was a deliberate shell game of misinformation, misdirection, stall tactics, and false promises, or just complete incompetence, it's taken them less than two weeks to completely undermine the more than two decades of trust we built up in them. CenturyLink didn't have to treat us this way, especially after we've shown them 25 years of customer loyalty. And to be clear, we were not asking for special treatment, discounts, or anything of the sort. All we wanted, well, no, needed at the risk of losing my job, was the internet access we were totally willing to pay their quoted monthly rate for. We also didn't ask for this shabby, discourteous treatment. In all my 49 years on this planet, trying to get CenturyLink internet service has been the most aggravating, stressful, nightmarish customer service experience I have ever gone through. Ever. And I must stress that while all the CenturyLink phone reps I spoke with were some of the most polite, professional, and courteous people I have ever encountered, and I hated to raise my voice to them, but you could see now why it came to that, the company's communication to us has been cold, impersonal, and nearly non-existent. A painfully glaring irony since CenturyLink prides itself in being a communications company. Under normal circumstances, it might seem silly to get so pissed off and so worked up about internet access, but first of all, let me reiterate, I'm not just looking to cruise Netflix or Hulu right now, though I am looking forward to it, and I sorely miss watching my friends' YouTube videos in my spare time. I need the internet to work remotely for my employer. I am extraordinarily lucky that I've had enough leave hours right now to carry me through the past three weeks without internet. But what would have happened if I didn't? Also, with social distancing and other isolation measures in place, this isn't under normal circumstances. Uh, this, the internet is one of our few connections to the outside world that we've become accustomed to always having. And especially in these uncertain and unsettling times, we need all the connections and threads to normality that we can get in order to maintain our mental and emotional health. And speaking of health, I mentioned my 82-year-old mother who doesn't get out much and for whom the internet is an even more important resource. CenturyLink, through a combination of their reckless incompetence, apparent deception, and shameful neglect of the consequences of both, jeopardized my job, which in turn jeopardized not only my financial security, but by extension the well-being of my family. If I can't keep a roof over our heads, what'll happen to my mother? And nobody f***s with the well-being of my mother. But there is a happy ending to all this. As soon as CenturyLink told us the next available installation date was June 5th, I hung up the phone and called Spectrum. After a 20-minute phone call with a nice rep in South Carolina named Justin, hey Justin, he directed us to a brick and mortar office nearby from which we were able to pick up a modem and a router the same day. And after a service call this afternoon, we should be connected by the time you view this video. In fact, I plan on uploading, uploading it on my much faster connection in uh, hopefully less than an hour instead of three or four hours it would normally take. It will have taken Spectrum less than 36 hours to accomplish what CenturyLink couldn't do for us in two weeks and with even faster speeds than CenturyLink could have given us, 100 megabits per second as opposed to 60. So we're going to be boxing up the old modem that CenturyLink shipped to us, and I'm enclosing a letter inviting them in as polite a way as possible to shove it up their f***ing ass. In fact, the only thing that's keeping me from enclosing a fresh ripe turd in the box as well is that it might get me in trouble with the post office. If you who are watching this are a CenturyLink internet customer and you have had a smooth installation process, then hey, that's great. Good on you. And I hope you're happy being a CenturyLink customer. Maybe we were just a victim of bad luck. But the fact that this dragged on way, way longer than it should have makes me seriously doubt that. All we needed was internet access, and if we'd gotten what we needed and were willing to pay for, this video wouldn't have been necessary. I'm sorry it was necessary but CenturyLink made it necessary. Oh, it felt good to get that off my chest, to just let it out, cathartically release it, and oh, it's like a weight off my shoulders, stress off my mind and stuff. I think I'll sleep a lot better tonight, and I think the rest of my day will go much better, especially if there are no unforeseen difficulties with Spectrum service call this afternoon. Wish me luck. Uh, anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. 
I guess, if you can. Suggestions, questions, constructive criticisms, lay them on me in the comments section below. Also scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter feed and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe and healthy out there, everyone. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.